Hello, this is Mr. Kenyanola, and I'm going to show you how to prove the intersecting secants theorem. Uh, so we're going to do this together. So you and I are going to do this together. So show, prove that the intersecting secants theorem is really true. So um, I would press pause and take a second or two or maybe 10 and, and, and analyze this. So analyze the circle. Okay, so analyze this circle right here and analyze this formula right here. This is the intersecting secants theorem. Press pause and make sure that you understand what it is. Okay, so, okay, pause, unpause. So, um, now that you understand it, you see what it's talking about, let me help you explain it. So, or let me explain it to you. Uh, so, the intersecting secants theorem, that's a lot of words, um, is talking about side lengths. So, about two secants. So, a secant line is a line that goes through, intersects a circle twice. So, here's a secant. Inter intersects a circle here at D and E. And here's another secant line that intersects the circle at C and B. And these two secants intersect each other. So hence the intersecting secants theorem. And if you look at it closely, the intersecting secants theorem says that CF, okay, is... Uh, so CF, so if you want to take out two colored pens, uh, this may help you out. Uh, so I have my uh, Christmas theme colors. So CF, I'm going to just uh, trace that. CF times FB. So the, just that piece right there. So this entire piece times this piece outside in the same secant is equal to df. I'm going to take my red. Okay, so this entire piece, this entire segment times fe, just this piece outside. So uh, if you multiply the green with the red, it's equal to the product of the green times the red. Okay, the outside times the entire thing is equal to the outside times the entire thing. So that's the intersecting secants theorem. If you want to make a power card on this, a flash card, um, or, or put this in your notes, I would. So I would draw this on the front and write intersecting secants theorem and then flip it over and then write this on the back. So press pause, draw it quickly and unpause it. So uh, now that's what the inter intersecting secants theorem is. You may be asking yourself, how do they even come up with that? Um, so I'm going to show you why and how they came up with it and why it works um, through the power of mathematics. And we don't even need a calculator for this one. So I uh, just need you guys to pay attention and, and follow along. If you have two colored pens or pencils or uh, uh, a crayon, two crayons, that's cool. So if you're into crayons, markers, whatever. Uh, and so follow along. And highlight this next thing so next thing we're gonna do is um, in order to prove it we're going to draw a line we're gonna connect B to D actually we're gonna make them dashed lines and make them super straight like mine and then we're gonna draw another dashed line like that okay so uh, so this right here these two dashed lines actually creates a bunch of triangles but we're going to focus on two triangles in particular so take your green pen and you're going to trace so here the green pen started off with c and f then we're going to trace c and e and then we're going to trace f and e so we have the green triangle and then we're going to take our red and then just trace this b d right here Okay, so now we have our red triangle and we're going to prove that this green triangle is similar to this red triangle. And if you guys remember, similarity, all the angles are congruent and all the sides are proportional. And so we're going to prove that these two triangles are similar by one of the three ways. Um, what are the three ways? Angle, angle similarity, side, side, side similarity, and side, angle, side similarity. So one of these three ways. Uh, so. We're going to start off proving that, uh, we're, and we're going to use a flow chart. If you want to do a two-column proof, then that's cool, whatever. Uh, it, it does the same thing, um, just a different format, but I'm going to use a flow chart. So we're going to prove that this triangle green is similar to red. Now look at it closely. Do these triangles have an angle in common? Yes, they both have angle F. Look at that. So the green has an angle F, the red has an angle F. So we can say in our first bubble, angle F is congruent to angle F. 
And why is angle F congruent to itself? Because of the reflexive property. Okay, so um, yeah, you're congruent to your reflection. So angle F is congruent to itself because both triangles have angle F. The next bubble in our flow chart, this one's a little tricky. Um, well, let me, let me put this arc for angle F, saying that angle F is congruent to itself. Both triangles have that. So okay, now our next bubble is a little tricky. Um, we're going to say, uh, so look at angle C, this angle C, actually, let's be specific, angle B, C, E, so this angle right here. I'm going to say, we're going to say that angle B, C, E, this angle right here, is congruent to angle B, D, E, this angle right here. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, why are they congruent? Don't, don't just take my word for it. Let, ask yourself, why are they congruent? Why are they congruent? The reason why they're congruent is, well, what kind of angles are these two? Yeah, they, they, they're they acute. They're also inscribed angles. And these angles, uh, both their vertices are on the circle. But look what these angles are eating. What are their intercepted arcs? Well, this angle right here, this intercepted arc is BE. So I'm going to highlight that. So if you have a highlighter, uh, highlight that. And then angle EDB, okay, this angle is also eating arc BE. And because they're eating the same arc, they're congruent. So we can say angle, and let's be specific. So three letters. So to, so if we were talking about this angle, angle B, C, E, uh, yes. Someone got a text message uh, is congruent to angle E D B. And let's close that bubble right there. And the reason again is because they're eating the same arc. They have the same intercepted arc. So the reason we, we can write in scribed angles have common intercepted arc. Okay, so the inscribed angles, these are inscribed angles. They have a common intercepted arc. So let's look at our two bubbles so far. We have a pair of angles that are congruent, another pair of angles that are congruent. So now we can conclude that the two triangles are congruent. Why? Well, let's, let's let's write the names of these two triangles. So the green triangle, we'll start off with triangle F C E is similar. Don't put congruent, uh, but similar to triangle F D B. So triangle F D B. Don't put green triangle and red triangle because we're going to need these letters in this order uh, in a second. So. Uh, because these angles are congruent, we can say that these triangles are similar because this is one angle, this is another angle. So angle, angle, similarity. Whew, take a breather. So that's why those two triangles are similar. But that, that doesn't prove the intersecting secants theorem that this times this is equal to this times this. But we'll get there. So if you remember that two triangles that are similar have... Uh, congruent angles and proportional sides. So we're going to work off of that. So uh, let's say this. Okay, so let's work with this green triangle. Okay, so CF, okay, CF, okay, um, over, okay, over. Now, what is the corresponding side of CF in the red triangle? It's DF. If you don't believe me, look at C and F. It's the first two letters here. DF are the first two letters over here. So CF over DF, or if you want to write FD, that's fine. That's cool. Uh, is equal to, so CF is the green triangle. DF is the red triangle. So green on the top, DF on the bottom uh, is equal to, uh, now we're going to say, uh, Fe, okay, remember we're talking about green in the numerator. So Fe, this piece over, 
Okay, and what is Fe uh, proportional to? Fb, so the first and third, first and third Fb. Okay, in the green triangle, so Fe over Fb. And we made them proportional, so this side over this side is proportional or equal to this side over this side because the triangles are similar and when you have tr uh, similar triangles then their sides are proportional so i'm going to abbreviate it corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional so again cssp uh corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional if you need to rewind that five seconds go for it and, and label what each of these letters stand for okay so we're almost there just bear with me so we have this bubble right here and this these sides are proportional because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional but we haven't gotten that yet so we're almost there um how do you know or, or what do you do in order to solve a proportion Cross multiply. Yes, cross multiply. So you cross multiply. Uh, so we're going to cross multiply. Uh, so CF will be times FB is equal to DF times FE. And close that. And we've solved that proportion. And why, how do we get from here to here? Because of cross multiplication cross multiplication so look what we got we started off from here and we proved that the triangles were similar we, we showed that the sides were proportional we cross multiply that proportion and we've got the intersecting secant theorem cf this side times FB times the piece outside, the segment outside is equal to DF, which is the entire segment times the segments on the outside, just that piece right there. So there, there's a reason why the intersecting sequence theorem works. Um, so thanks for following along. Again, intersecting sequence theorem, it's uh, the entire segment times just that piece on the outside is equal to the entire segment times the piece on the outside. Yeah, hope I, uh, you enjoyed that because I guess I did. Yeah, well, have a great day. This is Mr. Q.